full harvest moon in Aries and it is a super moon and it's the last super moon of the year. We've had five super moons. Super moon, moon means that it's the closest that the moon gets to the earth. So what does that do, right? Well, literally, it's going to increase the tides. It's going to increase the pressure. So, you know, there's already stories of emergency rooms going crazy on full moons and bars and stuff like that. Because, you know, when pressure or atmospheric pressure or the waters rise, the tides rise, the emotions rise, the inflammation rises, the headache pounds, whatever it is. And because it's quite close and it's an Aries moon, which rules the head, which rules the blood. You will see some head pounding kind of moments. If you're prone to headaches, you might you might want to watch for that. If you're prone to inflammation, you might want to watch for that. Um, otherwise, what's it going to mean? I told you so many. If you follow me, you'll know. Um, I, I understand Aries moons quite well, and they're not my favorite because um, how do you say this? Uh, let's just say most people super aware of their moon cycle, to know their emotional nature enough to have a bit of, not suppression, but a bit of control, self-control over their emotions, to harness their emotions, most people just don't, right, and not reflect, and an Aries moon is already not very reflective, let alone how volatile it can be, so if it's, if it's left unchecked, person is not aware of how much power they carry because of these warrior emotions they've got, that they can be a real one in China show, they can yell, they can, they can rage on the road, they can, they can argue for hours before they're tired, they can be very blunt. The thing is, a lot of people suppress their moon sign. If, the, if you're born with an Aries moon, you might be a Libra, you might be a Capricorn, you might come across completely different until we get you on a highway with blocked traffic or take you out camping or something where you're frustrated or where you think there's a big injustice. That's another one. Aries moon really cannot tolerate injustice at all. And they will fight. They'll say something and they'll fight. Now that can be good or bad, right? Um, if they've got some sort of cause to direct it towards, if their ethics are in check, if their morality is in check, let's say, and they are using that fight, that warrior mode uh, in pursuit of defending other people who can't defend themselves, or if that instinct to just dash in, if somebody's st stuck in their car on the highway and they might be the first one to run and get them out, they won't even think. So it's got this amazing potential for a heroic side, for a, the warrior side to be a good, but because so many people are not really mastering their emotions or aware, it's got a lot of potential for the argumentative, the, the outburst, the, the blunt comment kind of thing on an Aries moon. Even though when the moon is full in Aries, we are automatically in the sign of Libra, which wants everything to be fair and nice and pleasant and please don't have any conflicts. So this is why there's such a, uh, a push and pull with, with an Aries and Libra full moon. You know, when we get to next month, when we've got Scorpio Taurus, it's a totally different story. Both are very strong. Both are very fixed signs. Both will dig in their heels and be stubborn. And, and uh, in their different ways, they'll try to power each other out. But with Aries and Libra, it's really a different aspect of the, of, of the psyche. It's, it's um, you know, raw instinct versus detachment and reflection and weighing things. It's like dive in when, you know, just act or analyze. So it's more like a psychological function than like a battle of wills that you get with the fixed signs when there's full moons. Yeah. And then when you get mutable 
full moons like we'll have in November with Gemini and Sagittarius. Uh, sorry, December. When you get mutable signs in opposition, well, they're like waiting. Well, how are you going to position? Well, I don't know. How are you going to position yourself? Well, if you're doing that, I'm doing this. Well, if you're doing that, I'm doing this. <laughs> so it's a different kind of confusion, different kind of intensity. So Aries and Libra is always a time where you're thinking about, am I spontaneous? Do I just take the take the filters off and and act and it'll be fine? Come what may, even if some people are offended, but most aren't, so who cares? Or, you know, we're going to honor the Libra side. That's like, be a little more tactful. Come on, man. Like, let's think this through. Let's include everybody. Like, your your quick action, your your quick mouth, just kill, poison something in a group. Maybe Aries says it was worth it. It had to be said. And Libra's like, yeah, but oh my God, the repercussions, the fallout. So that's more what we're dealing with now. So let's take a look now at the chart. And you will hear my cat crying in the background. She's uh, she's just crying more this season. I don't know why. She's got everything she needs. Lots of cuddles, lots of food, lots of brushing her fluffy fur. Nice CBD oil, nice little snacks and treats. And still, she's just screaming and screaming in the middle of the night at me. So I don't know. Maybe she's also getting the full moon. So let's take a look at this chart. And as usual, it's cast for New York City. So the Eastern Standard Time. Anybody in the Eastern Time, the Ascendant and the Houses apply to you. If you're in California or if even further out, uh, and you're listening to this, houses might be different. The ascendant will be definitely different. So the, the overall dynamic still plays out the way it does, but it's not as precise as if you're in my time zone. So in this case, as you see, we have the sun in Libra, and we're joined by Mars down there, and the south node is also in Libra. That's a big deal. That just changed last month, the, node, the nodal axis. So what, what we just said about Scorpio Taurus and like battle of wills, we were dealing with those nodes for a couple of years. Now, Aries and Libra, like I said, it's a different kind of function of like myself or them, myself or them. And this is where, where the nodes are at. So it's just a different orientation for the next couple of years. So in this case, it is a Virgo as the rising sign. And over here, as you see the opposition, there we've got the moon, excuse me. The moon is in Aries, Chiron is in Aries. So this is gonna add some stuff because it's opposing Mars. Oy. The wound of the self, Chiron and Aries, in the house of relationships. Are you giving yourself away all the time in relationships? Are you even there? Is it all about everybody else? Do you feel nobody's including or make, you know, you don't feel important or you don't have a voice or everything's always about what your partner wants and needs and not you? You have to put yourself first in relationship and your relationships more to heal that if you're doing that. Otherwise, you might be the other way around. Maybe it's always all about you and you've got to be more sensitive, but there's an imbalance. And then the moon in Aries is just, it's not exactly conjunct, but they're both in the same sign. So it's going to emphasize people's shortcomings and triggers and where they've had old wounds. And like I said, people might just blurt things out. And Chiron is opposite Mars in Libra as well. So I... The sun and Mars and Libra really want to keep things balanced and and peaceful and diplomatic and not rocking any boats. And Chiron's just too wounded and the moon just can't help it. It's going to say something. So we have some potential based on these oppositions for um, emotional upsets or outbursts. Now, Chiron's a, a healer. Like, it's not always 
bad if our wounds come out. They have to in order to heal. But it's just that when there's all this opposition, it'll just require that much more of us. Maturity-wise, self-control, self-awareness, communication skills, to turn this emotional download or or flood into uh, calmer waters and and help you feel closer to others versus feeling even more lonely, uh, d depending on how things are done. So we're going to take a look also at where the chart's working the very best, which is, of course, the, the trine that you can see, the blue isosceles triangle. I, is it isosceles? Why am I thinking? When it's like 60 degrees, perfect triangle, is that isosceles or is that? Uh, ah, I haven't thought about geometry in so long. Why, I don't know why that blurted out. So... Yeah, so the moon is going to mean you got to think of yourself like the highest the highest quality, okay, besides the getting triggered and angry and blurting it out. The highest quality of the moon in Aries is like think of yourself, take care of yourself. If you've been neglecting yourself, if you haven't been having boundaries, if you haven't stood up for yourself, if you're always putting your own interests and needs last. And going, oh, well, I was going to go out, go to the gym, but oh, well, this person wants me to do that. So I'll just cancel it because they want me to. And and you're putting yourself second. And if you do that all the time, obviously not once or twice. But that's what we're looking at. That would be part of that Chiron wound is like, are you neglecting yourself? Are you feeling like you're in one-sided relationships? You got to take a look. So I think that's pretty clear, the Aries and Libra opposition. Now, let's go back down here to Mars because I mentioned Mars. Mars and the North Node are here together, or South Node, here together in Libra. And Mars and the South Node in Libra to me would be like, keep the peace at all costs. I don't want things to change. Oh, my God. Oh, my God, please don't. No, no, no. Don't say that it's going to change everything and I'm just fine like it is. I don't care if it's a little superficial. I just want people getting along. I don't want to deal with the drama. I don't want to hear why they're angry. I don't want to dig into the past. I don't want to know what's in their heart. I just want it peaceful and diplomatic. So please don't say anything. Because the South Node is stuck on the past and where it's been. And Mars there. Mars and Libra is in its, it's either its detriment or its fall. It's, it's not in its best self because Mars needs to be in Aries. So that's another interesting thing. Mars is in its opposite to where it's exalted uh, and it's, it's strong in Aries. It rules Aries. Uh, so it's in its opposite. So it's not in its good side. Mars and Libra will forever go, maybe, maybe this, I don't know, maybe. And no matter what they're faced with, they will always choose the person they think is, is the underdog, even, it, and they, and then they lose their sense of ethics. It's like Aries would be like, if you know where you stand, then that's where you stand. Why are you flip-flopping based on who you feel sorry for now? But that's what they'll do. So, ironically, the Mars and South node, it's really emphasizing that, like, don't rock the boat, don't change, don't say anything. However, Mars is opposing Chiron and the North node, and the North node is the direction we need to be going in, and that is more Aries. We need to become stronger, more self-sufficient, or self self um not self-contained in terms of like isolation, like me against the world and no one's there. No, no, it's really in the healthy way, like the warrior mindset. Think about any of your favorite uh, movies that displayed, you know, a martial arts or uh, I don't know, medieval or anything where somebody is in their warrior mode and they are alone often and they've taken a stand against something they believe in. 
and they're on a mission and they're they're literally on the hero's journey so this is the energy we need to tap into for the future for what's coming is a, is a strength and if you're going to be strong you have to know how to take care of yourself and your own needs you've got to be able to survive on your own a bit more and be tough a little tougher and that will mean taking some action and not hesitating so much um mars and south node in libra could sit and have 25 or 30 meetings before they do something you know and the moon and chiron and aries would be like for god's sakes people just go out the door it it's going to take five minutes you know <laughs> so yeah that's a big opposition of this full moon people will have different ideas of status quo versus change um how to harness that that warrior like energy in a good way not in a bad way so next i'm so sorry i have i don't know about you but i have been so tired as the full moon is coming so that just tells me there's there's like a real density to this full moon um Sometimes you feel energized by the full moon. Sometimes you feel exhausted. Sometimes you're super emotional. It's hard to say, but there'll be some shift of reaction and as it, as it comes and as a few days after. We usually have, to me, when we're really in tune with our emotions, we have, and you, you feel those shifts and fluctuations like, well, probably like, like the animals in nature feel, feel the moon cycles we're the ones just stuck in our minds denying everything but if the fluid in your body is rising because it's rising on the planet um you're gonna feel something if you don't well but if you're really sensitive to it then i find usually there's a build and a lot of sensitive people can have like maybe you have an epiphany or maybe you have a little mini meltdown or a big cry or maybe you have a big long nap but there's something where you peak you know, in the, in that full moon energy and a few days before, a few days after, but so Mars is also down here squaring Pluto. So my God, even more tension, Pluto and Capricorn, which is really like a CEO just wants to be productive, 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 push, 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 climb, 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 work, work, work. Don't stop. Let's get ahead. Let's come on. Come on. And very intense about it. And it's squaring Mars. Mars and Libra, like I said, they, they want to have a meeting about the meeting. And Pluto in Capricorn is going to be impatient with that or try to dominate it, which it probably will. It'd be quite easy for Pluto and Capricorn to come in and say, right, you can't make up your mind. Here's what we're doing. And then they'll just take charge and do it and steal the thunder. That's that's a very likely scenario. You might see that. You might see people stealing people's thunder if you're if you're wishy washy or you're on the fence too long. Somebody could just come in and take over. Now, Pluto is also squaring that Chiron. That's not easy. It's really not easy. So. If Pluto squares Chiron, then you've got a lot of power struggle issues, authority issues going on with that wound. So it's not just your average disagreement if you have them over this full moon. Somebody's triggered. Their ego and their sense of safety and control is triggered deeply. Like Pluto might just think, I'm just in there getting her done. Everybody should be grateful because nothing was happening. I'm taking charge. And Mars and Libra, uh, 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 you know, feeling like, what's going on? How come we can't just calm down and talk about it? How how come we can't have a discussion first? Why does it all have to happen so fast and intense on this person's schedule? And they're getting all triggered. And then you've got Chiron and Aries up there going, like, this guy reminds me of my oppressive dad or uncle or my overbearing grandma like who the does he think he is 
you know, and, and it'll be an old wound. It won't be because this Pluto person, I mean, unless it is playing out as, as the person who triggered your original wounds, but if it's not, you're going to be projecting that all over somebody else or you run that risk. So thus, got to learn to breathe in this full moon so that you don't set off a firestorm or a power struggle that could last. You know, we all know how, how one little thing can shift things into a power dynamic that can can last a lot longer than just a full moon or a few days. So you really want to avoid that unless it's worth the battle. So in this case, I mean, when you've got a walking wound and you've got like a, I'm not sure, let's, Pluto and Capricorn just walks in and says, we're doing, he's going to win out or she, they're going to win out. Uh, the other two are going to be uh, resentful. Unless they say, you know what? That's okay. Let them do it. I didn't really feel like it anyway. They seem they want to do all the work. They've got a vision. You go for it. Then you do it. Knock yourself out, Pluto. Then they could work as a team. As long as you let Pluto be the boss. But then they can work as a team. So, But otherwise, ooh, the dominance issues that could crop up. Now. I'm going to talk about more squares before we get into the, the easy flowy parts, because there are. Now we've got Venus and Saturn opposite each other, too. Here, look at that. Saturn's in Pisces, we know. Retrograde. Oh, endless le lessons of compassion. How much compassion do you have before it becomes maudlin or just pity or unproductive versus when is your compassion actually helpful and bringing forth a sense of unity or when are, is it just downright escaping reality like you know what I don't even want to deal with that at all I'm just going to go have a drink or 10 Saturn and Pisces can be very escapist. What it's here to do is learn to have compassion in a balanced way, not a feeling sorry or pitying way. It's a very hard one. It's, uh, to me, it's a very high lesson to have that Saturn. It's opposing Venus and Leo, which is like, ah, oh, me, 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 it's got to be me. Look at my hair. Look at what I just, oh, look at what I'm wearing, my bling. And, oh, yeah, and I got this many likes the other day when I did that. It's also passionate and has a flair for drama and for fun and for being playful and Saturn and Pisces like. Okay, is that really important in the big scheme of things? Like, does it matter what you're wearing, how much money you have? Does it, like, can you just sort of relax on talking about yourself and your plans all the time, like, there's other people besides you. Does any of that sound familiar? So, you know, that's the shadow side of the Venus and Leo. Venus and Leo could also, if they're more evolved, be just so much fun that they can rally the crowd out of just, I just want to do that. I'm enjoying myself. There's so much passion this person has. I want to do that too. You know, they can, they can, they can be so enthralled and engrossed with what they're doing and they love it. And because they love it, they're going to draw people to it and then they could lead, they could lead them or help them. And they'd be so happy doing it, you know? So even if it's like attention still sort of focused on them, it's different than like me and look at me. And it's very different, like a narcissistic self-centered thing versus a, just you're so in your passion uh, and you're enjoying it and you're just radiating it and other people can come with you and enjoy it too. That would be a perfect balance of these things because then Saturn gets the oneness that it's looking for and the creativity. Venus would drive it and lead it. But for now, Venus and, and 
you know, when they oppose each other, what it typically means is like, you can't. All right, sorry about that. I had uh, ran out of recording space on the computer, so I I uh, gonna have to splice this thing. So it means I'll be up all night editing again. <sighs> all right, I was just about to sing what Venus and Saturn means, which is like the Rolling Stones. You can't always get what you want. So yeah, Saturn comes along and sort of puts like a soggy blanket on the happy campfire of Leo, usually. Like I said, there's a way that they could work together. I was painting a picture of in an ideal world, how they could work together. But very likely when Venus is opposite Saturn, you're going to see, you're going to be, it's going to be more noticeable what, what one person wants versus another person who's really serious can't have fun, can't let go. And the other one is like trying to like brighten the mood and liven it up. And the other one's just pouring more rain on it. Um, you, or you might feel very frustrated, even just in your own, within yourself, why you can't get what you want, why you're all, it feels like you're waiting or am I being denied this? Am I, you know, yeah. Cause Saturn and Pisces can be very like, why me and poor me? can be a martyr. So Venus and Leo could represent this lifestyle that you've wanted and you don't have it. So Saturn and Pisces is like, what's wrong with me? How come I don't have this? What did I do? Why me? How come they have, you know? So we could see a bit of that. Saturn is also, as you see, squaring Jupiter, uh, not Uranus, squaring Uranus. And again, it's just sort of like, watering it down the uranus wants to move it's to be fast it wants to just zigzag zigzag you know it wants to just uh, do it different who cares throw that out let's just start fresh or sat or uranus could just suddenly bring in people bring in opportunities or people or ideas that you had no thought of before it's a wild card and it's very restless and like i said it dashes and swings around and it's Saturn and Pisces is very like like I said like damper you know it needs to be like calm and quiet and meditating and grounding and like to avoid any unsettling Uranian you know oh this is going too fast this is not the script oh my god this is triggering me start spacing out start wanting to just gonna play video games just gonna like withdraw and not get out of bed for three days with my cat because I don't want to deal with reality. So there's a bit of that going on. And Uranus is squaring Venus too. So there's like whatever Venus wants here with the, you know, they want to just have a playground where they can be them and do their thing and everyone loves them for it. And Uranus is just throwing little minefields in there, little little surprises, little, oh, not how you thought, not who you thought, not when you think. Um, so it's just a frustrating, it's frustrating being a square Uranus. It also might bring some really eccentric or strange people into your life. It could be, some of them could be entertaining for a while, but you might, might not see them as terribly long term, but it it could, you know, could bring some spice with who shows up. Now let's talk about what is working nicely, okay? What is working nicely? First are some minor aspects. So you've got a sextile here with Neptune in Pisces and Uranus in Taurus. So It's minor. It's It just means like Neptune might sort of smooth the edges of this Uranus. Like some of you who are a little more go with the flow might not feel like these surprises or these wild cards or these, you know, uh, the restlessness doesn't get to you. You might not, it might not bother you or phase you. You might enjoy it. 
Oh, yes, kitty. Then we've got another minor aspect between Venus and Mars with that node. So when Venus and Mars are working together, that's nice, right? Your masculine and your feminine aspect working together. So there is potential for, you know, that Libra side, right? Venus wants to have fun. Thanks. Libra wants to keep things, you know, let's just not stir the pot. Let's just keep it fair and balanced and including everybody. And Venus is like, yeah, let's have fun. Let's do. So they're not super like they still have to work at it, but they're more in the ballpark together. You might want to stick on that side of things if you don't want to have the volatile or the therapy moments or whatever. <laughs> stick with the people that are just sort of like let's just keep it light and have fun you know it's workable now where we get the the major aspects working well well we've got a couple more minor uh, one more minor one sorry uh pluto is also working well with neptune so again neptune will just sort of put like a like a cloud of foggy hazy misty effect over everything so what it what it's going to do like if you saw like a sharp object object coming at you and then there's a bit of fog well, it doesn't take away that there's something coming at you but you don't see it as much do you so you can maybe be maybe be hit by it or if you don't see it coming and it wasn't aimed for you oh well you know, you missed you missed a lot of stress that you didn't have to see. Where things are working really well is this grand trine in Earth. So Uranus Taurus, Jupiter Taurus, again, lots of Taurus energy, very practical, loyal, not to don't want it too complicated, want you to be comfortable, want to get things done on the the earthy level, meaning balancing finances, doing your gardens, cleaning things up, fixing stuff, cooking, enjoying, you know, simpler things about life. And that's working well again with Pluto, who's the CEO boss, you know, coming in. Now, Uranus is always going to throw wild cards and unpredictability. So, even Pluto won't like that very much, but it's workable. Might work very well. Could be extremely powerful when they get along. Think about an innovator and a real power player. Now they could clash harshly and never get a thing done, but if they're on board, imagine, imagine what they can do. So that's what's happening here because there's a grand trine plus Jupiter's emphasizing it. So if you're in the right team, with the right people right now, it's a great time to sort of forge ahead on something because um, there's that power play, power couple feeling about it. Then it links up with trines the sun in Libra, and Libra still. Very interesting. That's going to bring out a little more of the leadership side of Libra, which they do have. Mars and Libra doesn't want to decide, but the sun and Libra can actually make a good judgment call if it's feeling confident to do so. Pluto might motivate that. They're getting along here. So Pluto might enlist somebody who's very good with dealing with people. The more personable one, the more the one who's going to, you know, speak in front of people easier or smooth it out socially, they will know how to use that that person and bring them in but the main trine is with mercury even though mercury is in the 12th house but at least it's not retrograde but it's in virgo so it's in very you know analytical virgo so it's really an earth dominated trine that's the nicest energy here you're either i would say either go off and play and try not to get into anything too heated and lay low from it. If you don't want to have the volatility of the Aries moons, moon stuff. Or focus on anything where you have to sit down and go over some details, make some new plans, 
be practical about going forward with something, physically get things done. We said that about the last one too, but the earth trine is still there. And it, I'm sure it's going to shift by the time we have our next full moon. So, you know, well, actually it might not. Pluto will still be there. Uranus will, Jupiter will. It'll depend whether Venus makes it to trine those other planets in the next full moon by degree. If it does, then our Earth trine continues. So it's really telling us, if, if it did, it would be three full moons in a row where it's like, focus on the stuff that you can have control over and touch and build in your own world. Stay grounded. All right. So we're going to take a look now at the cards. Oh, the computer is very close to my face. <laughs> All right. All right. So let's just burn a bit of sage. It's sort of that in-between time where you don't know how to dress every day. It's hot, cold, hot, cold. I mean, that's lovely about fall, but it's also like you have to put a lot more thought into it. What am I, how warm is it? How cold is it? What am I wearing today? And also, are you like a, I won't turn the heat on until I'm freezing kind of person or until a certain deadline? Or are you like, you know what? I don't want to be cold. I'm turning the heat on. I don't care if it's September. But we're on that borderline here anyway in, in, in Montreal. So let's just cleanse our cards. And just ask for a little more insight, please, on this full moon for everybody. What do we need to be aware of? I think I might just nap. No, I've got a I've got a fun gig uh, party to go to. I'm singing with a band. So I will be singing on the full moon to a bunch of people I never met. Very Venus and Leo. Being on stage, playing music. Mars and Libra is perfect for music too. So hopefully no crazy fights break out at the party with the Aries and stuff. <laughs> but I won't be part of it. I'll be singing. All right, so what are our cards saying for this full moon? First card's the magician. Well, that's nice. Again, like get her done, get busy. Dream about what you want to build. Really assess what's in your toolkit. You know, like he's pretty versatile at almost anything he touches. And, you know, this is why to me, it's not really a magician card in the sense of what we think of in Hollywood, the magician nowadays would be somebody who can supremely multitask or is an entrepreneur. Somebody is a self-starter who has most of the skills that they need to enact whatever they desire, whatever they dream. And they might have to ask help or hire some people, but they'll be able to do a lot on their own. So where does that fit you? Or who do you know who's like that? Second card is the eight of one. So diving in, dashing in, taking a leap of faith, a lot of confidence, swiftness, you know, look at the rainbow and just the, these like lightning type of arrows going in every direction. Mercury and Sagittarius, just like calling it like it is thinking about traveling far and wide, including people outside your normal terrain. That's a very positive thing, especially with a magician. It bodes well for starting up something new. Third, my goodness. Third card is the priestess. Wow. This is this is like uh, somebody who's doesn't just have the skills. This person all like physical skills or knows the right people. They can build, they can, they can plan, they can do a budget, they can draw, they can do their marketing, they know how to do a website, they can, you know, they can do all the tech, they can build something. This though is like this adds the aspect of the person also feels there's some larger connection to what they're doing. 
and they're trusting their guidance. They're trusting their faith. They're getting visions or dreams or flashes about it. They're trusting their instincts, trusting their gut. Very powerful combo here. Wow. Then we have the emperor. So either you're the emperor, someone around you is, you can invite the emperor in to your project or idea, which would be a power player. Or sometimes it's governments, but it's usually an authority, a corporation, something with lots of name and stability and, and means. This is feeling big, man. Then we've got the two of wands, which is Mars and Aries. So we do have a bit of a bit of conflict, but nothing's without conflict as you grow. So let's see how that resolves. But there's there would definitely be some sort of conflict uh, if you bring in another person or a team to overcome. Like I said, that is normal. Okay, then you've got the Seven of Cups, which isn't always normal. Somebody might play games or do something in, in a, you know, not above board, sneaky or manipulative way. So whoever isn't winning the the argument could sort of, you know, gaslight or go sideways or talk to people or try to like smear, or spread names, you know, um, sometimes this is a, an outright scamming kind of card. Like you want to be careful, keep a tight rope on the finances of something or what your name is on. But again, let's see how this resolves. The next card though is the nine, the nine of one. So strength. So that means that whoever started this or whatever positive has been started, they're going to hang on tightly and fight for it. They're not going to let it be poisoned by whatever this conflict is or this behavior. It might be a bit tough, but they're going to hang on to that, to the good. And then you've got the fool, which, okay, so whatever this thing is, uh, once that strength card kicks in and you know who and what you're dealing with and what's coming up and that you're going to face the challenge of it, then the, the journey begins. There's some sort of launch of a project, a dream, a uh, it could be anything that the, the a project could be a business. It could also be a huge trip. It could be a, a bucket list thing you've wanted to do. It could be your own personal project um, that you've been wanting to, in it, you know, enact it. It's not always a business, you know, but that's just a common example to, that we relate to, but, but there will be a launch of this new thing. Okay. Okay. Last card is the hermit fool than the hermit okay so you're going to need to protect what you're doing and you're going to need to do an awful lot of work behind the scenes or hire somebody who would or find a partner who who likes that because a lot of the legwork or the lot of the whatever it's going to be done either in solitude or behind the scenes but it looks extremely good that's exciting. All right. So let's take a look for your sign, how it's going to play out for your sign in particular. Hmm. I'm not going to give it a particular question. I'm not getting anything clear for a question. Um, it's just going to be a general message, general messages for your sign. All right. So Aries, well, you've got the strength card. That's interesting. So as I said, you, the strength card sort of means you've already arrived. You've already built something that you consider good and, uh, you're, you're content with it. You're proud of it. You're feeling secure with it. Now you might have to defend it, meaning, you know, there'll be people trying to knock you off your block a bit, people trying to compete with you. Um, you know, if it's online, it could be trolling, you know, but there's something where like this card is very important that you maintain your highest ethics in the face of whatever is threatening it. So that's your challenge. Maintain your highest 
ethics in the face of whatever comes along that you feel is trying to threaten something you care about. Oh, here's a message and a half. Eh? All right, Taurus. You've got the art card. Well, that's interesting. So this is all about timing. This is all about mixing something. You know, she's, she's got her cauldron. She's mixing her potions, if you will, her apothecary. We all know, like, you mix two things together, you can get a smoothing reaction, uh, a combination of flavors, a foaming reaction, or an explosion. So you really have to think about the timing of what you want to do and what you mix and when and how much and how long you let it simmer before you add the next thing because you're in the you're mixing something you're creating something and you're mixing something often this card means too that you have to be aware there's a higher timing than just yours you can't control the timing you can cream butter and sugar together but you don't know how many minutes you need, how fluffy does it need to be for a particular dessert? Some things don't matter, like apple crisp. It can be all, doesn't have to be well blended. It still tastes great. It's all crumbly. If you want to make some sort of souffle, though, different story. Or icing, buttercream icing, totally different story. So this is what you're sort of dealing with, but it could be with people. Could be timing of funds versus materials. Could be, you know, at what point do I reveal what I'm doing and in what way and to who? And so it's all about trusting your timing as you mix things together and other people or other other elements will be coming into the into it. It's not all just your discretion. Gemini's, you've got the queen of discs, somebody very businessy around you, very um, luxurious. She likes her, she likes her luxuries. She likes to know that she doesn't have to worry about her security, her finances, her food, her comfort, her warmth, her clothing. She wants to be, you know, pampered and taken care of. Um, sometimes the queen is somebody who's worked for it really hard. And other times she's just found strategic ways to get other people to do it for her. She's got a little ram there. Who's like a little henchman or a little secretary, right? Deciding who gets to see Madame. So you might be up against someone like that. The horns here suggest a lot of wisdom in this queen though. They're just little dinky horns, so it's probably not a spoiled lady. This is probably somebody who worked really hard before she decided to kick up her feet and say, all right, you decide. Let me know who that is. No, I'm not taking that call. So is there somebody in your life who's hard to get through to or hard to get a hold of? You know, are there hoops to jump through to work with this person? Are they? Can they turn around and face you or are they looking far away? Maybe that provokes you to feel frustrated or rejected or disrespected or like could provoke all kinds of things. It depends whether you need her to turn around and look at you to work with you or whether she takes your calls. This could also be you with somebody. You might be the one doing that. Cancers. Well, look at that. You've got the ace of wands. Well, I'm a cancer and I ain't feeling the ace of wands at all. I'm exhausted. So ace of wands tells me, well, hopefully I'll have a burst of energy at some point or a burst of will. Now, you know, you don't have to be running around like a chicken with your head cut off to have your will. You know, this doesn't always mean like run a marathon, run fast, sprint to the bus, you know. It can mean getting in touch with your strong will, your strong drive, your determination, you know, your flame, your inner fire to do something, to see something through. So what is it that you want or need to commit to where you need a burst of will to do that? Because with all these planets, there's nothing in cancer right now. We've got stuff going on in Libra. 
Got stuff going on in Capricorn and stuff going on in Aries. And Cancer is over here going, there's no planets helping me out here. So often for Cancers, this is a moon where things are going to move. The chessboard moves. Something sets you off or you make a decision or an event happens and it starts to move a number of things in your life at once. Isn't that funny? A fuel truck just pulls up in front of me. It says, fuel it. <laughs> I love it. When messages like random messages like that. All righty. Now, Leo's. You've got the three of discs, which is Mars and Capricorn means you're working hard. It means usually full time or overtime. Um, you're feeling very productive, though. Uh, I like this card. Uh, you know, if you're not averse to working on things, if you find it rewarding to work hard on something, this is a great card. You know, if some of you don't like that, but you're looking for a full time job, um, it's a good sign. It's a good sign to go out there and look for one and get one. Otherwise, it's your own personal productivity and it's high. So, and it, it shouldn't be that hard for you to have the motivation to keep it high and finish things off and do more and a bit more and a bit more, actually. It's a very good sign. All right. Virgo. Oh, very nice. The star. So I don't know if you've been a bit um, hmm, a bit down or evaluating your life, maybe too much. The star means you got to have your dreams. You got to, you have to let yourself have faith and hope and believe in things too, without always having to break it down into every detail and reality and why. And I'd only say that to Virgos because other signs need exactly what you do. To balance them out but for you to be balanced out you need to dream you need to go i don't know how i don't have all the info and i may never have all the info but somehow i believe in this or i i believe i, I think that can work you know or just daydream what you want a little bit more just to see it it's so helpful just to visualize what you want in detail. Most of the time an earth sign will go, yeah, but it won't happen. So why should I bother? Why should I visualize some dream house if I'll never be able to afford one? But that's the thing. It doesn't mean that just because you start fantasizing about one that you're going to manifest it or get it. However, if you never visualize what you want, you will also be sure to never get it. You have to at least see it to even get in the ballpark of it. And it does, in some weird way, magnetize better things towards us. It might not be the exact version. You had a picture of something in a magazine. You're like, oh my God, I would love that. Maybe it's a couch. Oh my God, that's a beautiful $10,000 couch you saw in a magazine or something. And you're like, oh, the details, it's just impeccably made. It's perfect. I'd saw, but I don't have, I don't have the means for it. Well, visualize yourself sitting on that couch because it's not that it's a $10,000 couch. There's something about the style that calls to your personality. There's something about the fabric or the texture or the sense of comfort or luxury that it gives you, that it's giving you a feeling. And I assure you, if you open your mind and don't worry about all the nitty gritty details, something might come into your life that gives you a very similar feel that isn't 10 grand that you can actually afford. All right, my sermon is over. Okay. Libras, love is in the air. It's the love card, it's the two of cups. Things gonna be nice. You know, that's the other side of Mars and Libra. When it's you know, when it's Mars is not in its warrior mode, well, it's more of a poet, you know, maybe it's more of a dancer or an artist singing you a song. Maybe it's uh, gentle and trying to 
understand you and keeping things in this wonderful, light, fluffy zone where you're just enjoying somebody without worrying about, you know, differences so much. So it's a very nice card for you to have the love card when it's your birthday month. I would say you're um, you're going to focus more on the uh, the people that you get along with easily and stick with them, and you're going to keep your life in a sort of a zone of you know who you like best and who you get along with best, and what feels the easiest for you, the ease, you know, very very lovely message for you, and happy birthday to all Libras too. All right, Scorpios. Five of Swords. Well, there's some sort of conflict. Sometimes this is too many cooks in the kitchen. Too many opinions, too many ideas clashing. Um, usually one or more people need to stand down. For, for something to work otherwise there could be ruptures if it's an internal thing you're trying to do too many things at once that are conflicting with each other there's going to need to be some simplification of your of your desires your goals maybe your your ambitions or your your you know um sort of examining your the reasons why you want whatever this is so bad because it's like people are are digging in too much you might just need uh you know you might not even be one of the ones involved in the conflict but it's around you uh you might need to just sort of withdraw and pull back and take a bit of space yeah that's the overall feeling i'm getting is like take some space lay low a little bit you know there's an awful lot of that conflictual energy as i mentioned in the chart and um since your conflict card comes up, I'm like, oh, you don't, unless it's your battle and it's really important, or unless you really are sure you could be instrumental to shift something and help, but it'll be work, you know? So it it's, I'm not saying, oh, never work on things. It isn't worth it. I'm not at all. It's just, um, you know, those situations where there's too many cooks in the kitchen are very, usually very hard to resolve. You know, unless one person steps down and then there's still repair work to be done with the others that remain. So uh, there could be a sense of loss, you know, uh, or having to give up or walk away from something that's not working right now. And it could be temporary, too. All right, Sagittarians. Ooh, we got the Nine of Swords. Okay. Mm. Well, Sag, right now you've got to be a little bit alert for who's not really showing their true colors or intentions or for who's not speaking very well to you or about you. Um, if it's you who's doing that, then, you know, you got to clean up the act, clean up the energy to shift whatever situation it's in. Because this is a card of gossip or smear or slander or sometimes outright insults abuse bullying uh, manipulating it's not a nice card so if you're in a dynamic like that i know very well sometimes we're not able to pull out of them leave quit whatever if you are able to distance yourself that's that would be the best you might need to but if you cannot you can at least sort of and this is just my own trick because I, you know, I dealt with enough of this where I worked for 15 years. Um, when people were sort of riled up and gossipy and volatile to like, what you know, when the, there's like a, what's the word? Almost like, you know, when people get, they act out of character in a crowd, but on their own, they wouldn't do those things. I think it's the same thing, even in corporate culture um, or even in families, if it's a toxic kind of family where one starts to talk and the other gossips and the other jumps in and the other, and soon all, soon they're all like in it together. And there's a momentum to their complaining and frustration. They're all, un, you know, unloading, getting their needs met by sharing all this 
crap that they're going through and putting somebody and uh you know if you're in on that well it's um you know it's it only helps briefly to say uh to say uh Un unresolved feelings about a situation or person but if it, if the gossip continues no, it's never good it's never good and uh if you're in the midst of others doing it then it's not fun and and it needs to me if if i'm in and around this vibe and i can't leave it um i don't confront it i I just lay low and let the storm cloud pass because I'm well aware that when people are doing this and there's like a, ooh, 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 yeah, they're going to bond for a while and then they're going to crumble because it's toxic energy and you just have to step back and give it enough space and without you being constantly involved or trying to fix it or in the middle of it or that's not what I said, but I was trying to help you, but then it got back to them or whatever, whatever mess with that card just sort of like be very calm everything's fine don't weigh in don't weigh in neutral and let everybody else sort of go through their their wave until it starts to break apart and people will calm down again or there will be other decisions to be made at a later time so i know that sucks but that's the energy that i'm getting for you uh for this full moon capricorns success victory victory six of wands very nice so like i said the best energy in the chart is touching that capricorn pluto and all those earth planets and like getting things done maybe in faster or more innovative ways than usual um looks like you're feeling good you get to be on in, in charge a bit you're expressing yourself more you you might get to lead something you could have your a little bit of your moment to shine, a little bit of a quick little spotlight moment, or yeah, that's a win, you know, like it's good. It's feeling like, you know, an accomplishment, something, something that you've been wanting, you know, even if it's just a brief moment of something that hardly ever happens and, oh, this is happening. This is great. I, I, I like that, but it, it's, it's got a nice little boost this full moon for you. That's very nice. Aquarius, you got the chariot. Okay, boy. Okay, you are in a position to bring together a number of different forces at once. Um, as I've mentioned in other decks, this is usually a charioteer with two horses that are running. Sort of, they're he's got the reins to both, but they're they're running almost in two different directions. They haven't started to do it yet, but they're sorting to veer off. So. Right, if you were traveling down a dirt road in a chariot with a couple of horses and they start to go, Ooh, what would you what would you do? You've got to bring them back on course. Otherwise, you're gonna to lose to control of the chariot. So this is the position you're in, either with your work, your family, like you are the charioteer, and you've got to see where are people starting to veer and how can you bring them back together. And it's not gonna be like an easy fix. The chariot always means there's some some obstacle to overcome that isn't always easy. So just think about that. Who, where are you starting to see little cracks in the armor? It's not full on conflict yet, but where is something starting? Where can you nip something in the bud? Where can you, like, don't let it get to where you're like, Crap, we're going to go off the road, you know? How can you start to just do this with both people or both parties or whatever it is? Reining things in. And Pisces, finally. So you've got the Princess of Discs. So this would suggest, yeah, for you to be also in your more practical side. I would say go out in nature, go out in the woods, go for a long walk, take some time somewhere where it's peaceful and give yourself some time to really think. I get a feeling you need some time out to think. And um, 
some of you, of course, will have big things going on, but not everybody. But there's like a need to sort of take a breather and go, all right, what's happened and what is coming up next? And how do I organize myself? How do I hold myself with this? But it feels like it's something you're already in the middle of it. It's not going to stop. So it's like, you know, like if you were running a marathon and you stopped for five minutes to drink water, but you're going to still finish the marathon versus quitting. No, you're still going to run the race. You're still going to stick with whatever this is that you're doing or you've committed to or who who's around. And she's taking a moment and she's looking down and everything's cloaked, right? So she needs to sort of remove the cloak of what she's looking at and see what's under it. So she needs some pause to be still and, and some sunshine and just see things with your own eyes. And it's just a pause. Very interesting messages today. So as usual, I forgot to plug any of what I do and Pisces, you're probably the only one still listening, but um, as usual, if you wanna join my intuition cafe, uh, the links are below. And uh, if you want readings with me, then you can also message me, find me on Facebook or Instagram. And uh, I wish you a good full moon. All right. <laughs> we'll see you for the new moon in a couple of weeks.